so much fun there is to embark on this kind of journey. Devastator don't present anything new, nothing that hasn't already been heard in the last 20 or 30 years, but they still manage to impress with their energy and even their own identity, however contradictory that may seem. The grip they have on this second album is addictive, even if the level of enthusiasm can be diluted by a lack of dynamics, which is present on tracks like that spell Defloration, it's just not immediate. Like thrash metal with that touch of classic heavy metal that makes all the difference in leaving us completely surrendered. Hardcore may be easy to categorize, which could mean that we are dealing with something predictable. This is where Agonista's debut album could fit in, but grey and dry as the dirtiness that points out more towards the definition of hardcore in the 80s and names like Discharge, for example, than the actual definition associated with the term nowadays, which isn't so relevant as it's really the way they managed to establish a claustrophobic atmosphere in the heart back to the classic names of crust, punk, hardcore, short but highly addictive. French band Merrimack stood out on their own merits in the ever-engaging French and even European black metal scene for their primitive approach to sound, without this meaning that they neglected the sonic aesthetic that any fan of extreme music cherishes. Seven years have passed since their last album, so there would be anticipation to see how Merrimack would perform in 2024. Well, no surprises if we say that they present themselves in a very brutal way, but also with a set of dynamic themes that go beyond one dimensionality in form. A track like Starving Crows is a good example. For those who were hungry for a good Mary Mac album, here's a comeback that won't disappoint. <laughs> Whatever style they play, Punching Moses is a great band name. And it's even the perfect name for a band that goes for that corrosive Scandinavian punk crust feel with a dirty metal fueled rock and roll energy. An album that may not require much depth on the part of the listener, which is refreshing in itself. We need this kind of sound more. And now for something completely different. Well, not that different, but at least refreshing and challenging. Almost There, as the title suggests, reveals a state of expectation for what is ideal, but with the impatience of someone who is not satisfied with the current state of things. In fact, what we really have is the weight of despair, sometimes in a sweet way, sometimes in a haunting way. It's a journey that lays bare the frailties of those making the music and those listening to it. The return of Paul Silva's Blame Zeus project, a project whose debut marked us out as one of the highlights of 2020. So expectations were very high for this sophomore release. Expectations that it fulfills in an unexpected way. At first listen, the intimate nature brings us closer to the post-rock field without being totally on that side. As we go along the journey we'll find several reasons to get lost and one of them may be even a disadvantage for modern times. There isn't really a standout track here, one that could make playlists and propel the passage to a new level of popularity, because in reality this is a work to listen to from start to finish. Old school, like a book, like a movie, like a journey with a beginning, middle and end. And it's a fantastic journey.
With a description that says they sound like a mix between Mogwai and Neurosis, how can you not be automatically interested? Of course, that can have the opposite effect on you, setting your expectations too high and then the music itself doesn't live up to them. Have to be honest, apart from a certain sense of desolation and extreme melancholy or despair, there's more of a connection to Mogwai than to Neurosis, but I can see the connection because the darker tone and ambience present over all these songs. An album that is a journey into feelings and inner landscapes that becomes more engaging with each listen. A new project by Wade Black from Crimson Glory, named after one of my favorite albums by the American band. His voice is on point, although more restrained compared to the underrated album. And we have a very powerful side with that characteristic US power metal feel. A great comeback and a must. Something Wicked March is in was a nice surprise, despite some skepticism about David Vincent's musical adventures after Evil Divinum Insanus from Morbid Angel. It might seem that for this sophomore release there wasn't much room for surprise. Blasphemer's riffs are unmistakable, as is Vincent's own vocal approach where, despite the characteristic tone, he has a renewed power where the theatrically scores points, sometimes reminiscent of Alan Averill from Primordial, managing to escape the limits of what the Black and Death Metal label might indicate. More than a competition or an exercise in all stages for Morbid Angel fans, this is an album that shows that Ultimus is an entity of its own with something new and refreshing to present. It's so easy and above all tempting to start to dislike any proposal that gains increasing popularity. Not that Midnight's popularity is such as to see them cross over into the mainstream, however it's not hard to see why they're attracting more and more fans, without substantially changing their sound or concept. The least disconcertingly, simple blend of black thrash and speed metal like a missing link between Venom and Motorhead with the ability to make us headbang with fury. Yes, it's one dimensional, yes, it's not even 30 minutes long, but while it lasts it manages to keep the listener hooked without thinking about anything but headbanging. Is that what we want from metal? Mm -hmm. 